When I was in college, I worked at Disneyland. And when you work at Disneyland, back when I worked there back in the 90s, you would go pick up your uniform and get changed. Then at the end of the, sh go in, work, at the end of the shift, you would come back, put on your uniform, and put take off your uniform, give it to the person, and go home. No one ever took any of their uniforms home back when I worked at Disneyland. And I believe I worked in Tomorrowland Terrace. That was maybe a black and gold type of uniform. And then I worked at the Blue Bayou where I bust, busted tables and washed dishes. And I believe I had on a white shirt, blue pants, and I had an apron. But one thing you learned about with Disney is everything just, they had everything written down. Everything was just simple. All you had to do, this is what we want you to follow. This is what she wants you to do. All we want you to do is give the person experience. You give the person experience and we get paid. That's all it came to it. And if you don't give the person experience and you cause problems, you get fired. And that's all it was, was like. And I remember I worked in a cafe and you, you would have your evaluations and basically it's as long as you could show up for your shift, balance your checkbook, do whatever, you would be fine. And I remember when I worked there, Disney only owned Disneyland, Disney World, and I don't believe there was not even a, no Disney Tokyo, or there had barely started Disney Japan. Now, if you look at where they are now, they own basically like all of Hollywood, like 50% of like, I live in California, so Disney recently bought out Fox. I don't know what happened to Fox. So Disney bought out Fox, and now they basically own all their movie properties. And all they do is keep expanding. One thing I learned about when you work for Disneyland, if it doesn't work, they will cancel it. They'll go maybe a year or two, and then after a while, they'll get rid of it. Because I remember when I worked in Disneyland, they used to have like that America the Beautiful, where you would go in and you would go look at all the different areas of America. Well, when that wasn't working, they waited like four or five years, but then they just blasted it out. And I believe there were some other attractions that used to be there, like a Tom Sawyer Island or something that was working for a while, and they had to adjust it. So one thing you learn about Disney, like they always look at the bottom line. If it's not making money, unless you can find a way for that experience to help them make money, they're going to get rid of it. And I kind of relate that to my engineering exam. As you know, it took me seven years to finally pass my engineering exam. And for the first two years, all I did was just listen to what everybody said. Hey, Martin, you should just walk, read this Chilapati book and focus on two subjects. Or you should just focus on this, this thing. Or you should just take, go in, take all your books, and your, get an HP calculator, go in, and take the test. I mean, for two years, I don't know what kind of strategies. I, all kind of strategies. I went to Jack London Square one time to take a course and try to pass. But I remember, you know, after two years, I said, you know, I, I appreciate the people giving me the knowledge, but I'm going to have to customize what I have to myself. So I want to make a note of this. I want you, once you get off this call, I want you guys to take out your calculator and write down what advice have you taken some, from someone, but you haven't checked your own experience or knowledge to see, hey, can I actually customize or use what this person is telling me? So it took me two years to figure it out, and then after the next five years, I was finally able to pass the exam. I believe if I, had, if I hadn't used like that Disney strategy, well, if it doesn't work, you just have to just cut it out. I'd probably still take it, be taking the exam, or maybe instead of passing it in seven years, seven years basically is a short time if you think about it. Because if I didn't use the right strategies and just realized I have to t take responsibility and I base the exam on passing it on the number of answers that I can pass based on my knowledge, I'd probably be still taking the exam. And I relate that to what I did yesterday. Yesterday I worked at an event and we had about 4,000 people. And all you do is like, it's simple. All you do is have the people come into the park and you give them an experience. And the experience you're basically giving them is the experience of food and giving the parents an experience of relaxing because we have like the different rides for them. And I was working at the pretzel machine. Simple. All you do is like, it reminds me, like, like when I worked at Disneyland, just do this simple job. Don't worry about how 
menial people think your trip to job is. Just try it and see what happens. And I think I had about 100 to 300 people come up to me. I had to go to the pretzel machine. So you go there, open up the pretzel, open up this little oven, put the pretzels in, bake the pretzels. Then after you bake the pretzels, take them out, put the salt on them, put them in the cabinet. And then people would even have the option of cheese. I had a nice cheese ladle, yellow cheese, and I also had like the yellow mustard, get it? So, and I remember the kids would come up every two to three minutes. Can I have a pretzel? Can I have a pretzel with cheese? And all my job was not to pay attention to the popcorn maker, not to pay attention to like the, the cooks that I used to work as a cook, but I just bake the, bake, bake the pretzel, get the pretzel out. And that's how Disney works. This is basically, it doesn't matter in the eyes of the customer how menial the task is or how hard it could be. It's just repeating a process that they work over and over. And then it also gives me the opportunity to talk to people. And you see the parents are just there to relax and they have the rides. So it's a great experience. It's like business. It's like showing them like, all you really have to do is like, if you give people an experience, you can get money. But you also have to be able to like find out if what part of your experience that you're giving to them is not working. And that's what you have to adjust. So that's basically what I learned from working at Disneyland. It's like when you work at Disney, it's no surprise that they've expanded because people used to be just talk about, oh, you work at Disneyland and blah, blah. Just think of all those people who work at Disneyland that have stock and how Disney has expanded. There was no Disney, no cars and no Disney experience when I was around. It was just Disneyland. And they basically own, they run Anaheim. And they, it's just like they're showing you like, if you just repeat a simple process over and over, make money, while other people are out trying to have fun or not paying attention to the bottom line, you can just do like Disney. You, you can just have enough money where you can buy a competitor like Fox for $70 billion. And every, if everything does go to hell, they can just saw, start selling off the... They, they can just basically, if they really wanted to, they could take whatever that classic... Fox things or all those so-called classic American things and just sell them to some foreign country. Sell them, sell them, like sell them to China. Here, China, here's our American-made movies from like so many years ago. Just sell it. That that would be ironic. How much are you going to sell for? I'd give it for 10 buy-in. And, and Disney would do it in a minute. They, I mean, that's how it is. It's like, what's the bottom line? And that's one thing when you have enough money, you start to have enough power and when you combine money and power together, you can make people do a, you can make countries and nations do a whole lot of things. And that's why I think it's so funny because I live here in San Bernardino and you can see how Amazon moved in because the land was so cheap because after 2008, we had a lot of land foreclosures and just a lot of vacant land. And they're just like all over the place. I mean, just like Amazon world. And if you look at my video yesterday, what I love about Amazon World, it only exists Monday through Friday for the regular worker. Amazon, it does go 24 hours. They're making money 24 hour, 24 hour. But for the worker, it's only that Monday through Friday. And if you drive around, it's like a ghost town. Like for my video, even if you go to Chino, go to Chino, they got the all, they got, I saw Yokohama, I saw some, a, a whole bunch of other workshops, other warehouses, but the same thing, Monday through Friday, boom. While in other countries, it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Here in America, we like to take weekends off. That's why, like I was saying yesterday, we have people living paycheck to paycheck. 76% of people are living paycheck to paycheck. People on welfare, this is like the greatest economic expansions ever. And I just think what's going to happen when the next election cycle, if you haven't positioned yourself to make money. So like, that's what I'm saying, like, don't, don't get caught up in having fun on the weekends. Cause unless you like Disney and you have a system in place where you can bring in money, if you're able to get rid of things that aren't working quicker and remove the emotion, you'll be like these homeless people on the ramp. Like almost run out to, like who keep walking like zombies in front of cars who are going to get hit. And no, they're not going to cash out. No one helps. Uh, no one's going to help nobody with money. Trust me on that. And then as I get ready, is this is for countdown day 21 to Vegas. Let me give you my dental tip of the day. 
for you people who are dentists and, and want to do some sales, remember, last today or the tip was to think about. Today's tip is to follow up. I want you to go and just look at all your present and past people who've come into your dentist's office. All I want you to do is just count up how many people you have. That's it. That is your assignment for the day. Go out, go find out who's come in, who's coming, who's come out, and then I want you to multiply that number by 2%. Just take it, if you have 100, multiply it by 2%. If you have 500, multiply it by 2%. Because remember, when a person, when you, whenever you start making cold calls, which you guys will do, 2% are going to sign up the first time, if you're lucky. But I'm going to make, I'm going to assume 2%. Then after that 2%, to get that over 98%, you've got to have to follow up. And that's what we're going to work on. That's why I would say take a look at some of Grant Cardone's material, because I've been using Grant Cardone, Kevin Hogan, Tom Hopkins, I've gone, I've worked at a martial arts studio where I did a lot of cold calling and I've also did a lot of lead generation while I was talking to people. And I remember like when I was at Costco as a lead generator, that's face to face. So when you have a person walk by you, I'm not interested and you can't get a rebuttal and you have people around you. So you got to, that's how you learn to develop. And not even a quick kick, quick, it's not even, you know, you're not even developing thick skin because some of the people are walking by you. Either they could have a call, they could be living paycheck to paycheck, or their company could be ready to move out the state and they don't even know it. So that's what I learned. And then I did it also in martial arts studio where I did a lot of cold calling. I did a lot of follow up. I did a lot of follow up calls where I called people on the phone. Hey, hello, this is Martin from Golden Tiger Martial Arts. Would you like to come in for an introductory appointment? Or oh, this is Martin from Golden Tiger Martial Arts. We saw you had come in for, you signed up for an introductory appointment. But you have to come in. So we know things come up. Can I get you scheduled for this one? Blah, blah, blah. So I was like the one who was making appointments. Also, as the lead generator at Costco, I would go want to sign up for Costco home decorating. Set appointments. I would set five to ten appointments a day. Then sometimes they'd come over. I'd show them, hey, before you go, before we come to your house and put your, give you like a... Um, uh, decorating extra, I show them some rugs, so I'd make some com like five to ten percent commission selling maybe two to three hundred dollar rugs that Costco used to carry. So that's what I want you to do if you're a dentist go to your database and just look at all those leads, past and present, who's converted, who's not, and I want you to multiply by two percent. And then we're going to talk about how you can call them because that's what I've done a lot of. Also, as you know, we're going to be in Vegas. September 2nd. So here's my blackjack tip of the day. I think I've done the split. I've done aces and eight splits. I think we talked about four and sixes. So my, my, my um, blackjack tip of the day is to, you have to bring enough money to at least pay 100 hands. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take $1,000 and we're going to play the $10 blackjack table. And our objective is to make $547. So I want you to go do the calculation for me and let me know how many hands I have to win at $10 a winning hand to get that $547. But that's all I'm going to, so this, uh, my tip is I got to at least have $1,000 to make that, to pay 100 hands to see if we can't get to that $547. So that's our strat, that's one strategy I learned from the book. And then I got to go back and remember all the other stuff I had. Okay, I'll give you one. I can't remember it. Okay. So that's why I got to study. One blackjack tip, double down. So if you're going to double down, if you have an ace, you can only, when you double down, only double down against 10 and under. So for example, if you have an ace and your dealer has a up card of 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 2, 3, 1, then you double down. Now if the dealer has a card like an ace, do not double down. Just go on and hit your card. And if you win, you get double the money.